Hi, and welcome to many of uh, videos regarding clean power, surge protection, uh, etc., etc. This particular unit is a 12 volt slash 5 volt regulated switching power supply pulled from a computer, um, converted to where it's actually going to be our central uh, power distribution for our, our entire house for all of our 12 volt and 5 volt accessories. That's Wi-Fi routers, um, cell phone chargers, etc., etc. Uh, it's not complete because I'm waiting on some of the sensors to get here. But what you see on this side right now is the fan. But what will go there is a amp and DC meter, um, basically um, input AC voltage, input AC current. Output DC voltage on a 12, um, output 12 volt current and 5 volt voltage and 5 volt current. That way I'll be able to see exactly how much is being drawn um, on the input and on each output. The other benefit of using an a old computer power supply is that they output very clean power. One thing I want to go into, a couple things real quick. Um, everyone recommends that you should unplug all your power adapters at your house, your cell phone charger, your TV, VCR, everything like that. Back in the day, yes, that kind of was true to protect them from surges. Um, however, that's not the case to protect them from surges nowadays, nor does it save you any real money. When the TV is off in, in standby mode, you're basically, um, in, in the USA, you're sucking down um, one cent every several months, if that. I forget what it actually is. I think my, my TV um, has a standby. Oh, I can't remember exactly, but it's very few watts. So um, all your all your stuff d doesn't and doesn't consume power. Not only that, most of your new electronic um, AC adapters are switching power supplies themselves, not very good ones to control the output, but they turn off when they sense there's no load, so they really don't have an inefficiency. The next thing I want to go into, is, um, certainly before I go into any of this, is surge protection. Um, Back in the day with electronics, um, you really didn't, no one cared about surges, still nobody does. It's it, as much as it's in the next five years, surge protection is going to be the one of the next biggest markets. If you know me, you know that I actually know what markets are coming up from experience. But going back into that, um, even five years ago, most electronics we had um, were not very sensitive because most components were bit, you know bigger i e this is a ten year old one even though it's brand new and would still be about this size but nowadays we have very uh, small components the uh, surface mount very low voltage very low you know amperage on certain ones so um, they're very susceptible to power surges. The thing people don't realize in your house is every time you turn on and off an appliance from a light in a room to your refrigerator to your um, air conditioner, anything that uh, takes a load, even your TV, creates a small brownout slash spike slash surge all basically in a row. Um, if you've ever noticed your lights dim whenever your air conditioner or microwave turns on, that means you're getting a brownout. Well, that's very bad for all these new electronics. That way, that's re re one of the reasons at our house we've gone to on all of our critical uh, electronics a true online, true um, UPS system that is basically um, giving us clean power all the time and doesn't require the mains. Um, when there is a failure, there's no switching time because it's already running on battery. It just happens to be charging the battery at the same time. That is not an off-the-grid inverter or you know one of these you know freaks that are trying to get off the grid. All we're trying to do is be efficient while we're on the grid, but within that, where we have a peak and, and non-peak rate, so we're charging up during our off-peak hours, using them during our and then using that that battery supply at a peak rate. So, to give you a shortened example, and our other videos will explain it further. Um, during off-peak, we pay about six cents. During peak, between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., it's anywhere from 16 cents to 49 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, and during the summer and then during the winter, it's completely one cents a kilowatt hour, so it's dirt cheap. So we've already saved money um, because we, you know, we got it super efficient. Um, and then not only that, and then with this adjustable peak um, uh, rate thing, we actually are able to consume more power during the peak hours than we used to, but we are actually not having to pay those those peak prices. So just to give you a little back. Um, 
uh, going back into surge protection. On this particular one, since it does go back to UPS, a true online AAA SU-1500, uh, um, I did not um, put an MOV in line on the line um, hot and neutral because I did not want it to um, send that surge back into the inverter. Um, rather, what I did is put the, the line to ground and then common to ground, which is um, which is what is typically spec to do, but you're also typically spec to put one on line to neutral. Well, on uh, certain UPSs you can blow them, and I'm actually waiting for a written answer from Triplight what they say, and according to what they say, I'll either be adding an MOV across load to uh, common or not. Um, that's just from a safety standpoint. I don't want to blow up my inverter because we had a surge. Um, going back to the surges, um, and I'm going to go into another video on that, and that's something everyone should watch, but um, in your house you basically need a surge uh, pro a protector for each device that you have, not just a power strip, um, and the other the surge video will actually explain all about that, but um, that is the only way you can guarantee you can save all your electronics. And not only that, in the future, next two to three years with all the electronics that we're growing in our houses and offices, it's becoming even more prevalent that clean power and surge protection um, is, is accounted for. So as we can see right now, we have no power. We, we have a power outlet, but it's not plugged in. But we have no power coming out of it. Now we are in the off position. We have the, our, our, our 115 to 120, um, our 115 to 220 a switch. The reason why I left this in place, just to go over this again, is if you switch it over to 220, you can actually feed it in DC voltage. I forget the voltage amount and not have to change anything. Um, and that's on certain ones, but I also might uh, give this away to somebody and they may for some reason want 220 or whatever the case may be. I figured I'd just leave it in there. So right now you can see we have no, no main um, power coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and, and turn the mains on. And as you can see, the main light that came on, nothing else came on. And our green indicator light over here is a green indicator that the, the power supply should actually be firing up. We have a small load on it, a 120 volt, 150 watt halogen as well as a fan and a car headlight at 50 watts. The car headlight is not hooked up in, in, in play right now, and I'll, and I'll explain that here in a second. But we'll go ahead and turn it all on. And you can see that the light came on, fan came on, we're drawing a load. You can actually see that it is heating, in fact, heating up the element. The reason why we couldn't hook up the car headlight and like what we just had happen is a short is because we took too much of a load on it at one time. So what we do at that point is turn it off, turn it back on, and it works. The reason why it, it failed is because it saw a huge uh, what do you call um, surge on it and it thought it had shorted out so it was a safety feature but as you can see if I can get it to stay that it doesn't in fact stay running that's 50 watts plus the uh, consumption from that plus the fan and we have you know don't ever touch any electronic the only reason why I'm touching what I am touching is because I have an, a working knowledge of electronics and circuit boards because I designed them and my background so I know what I can touch what I can't touch and I know what's hot what's not so just to cover but going back into we have our surge protection we have our main breaker which we, then we have our indicator light we have our switch that tells the power supply to turn on and off again this is not a input this this does not um, cut the power to the power supply the only way to cut the power to the power supply is actually pull the um, AC out. And I'm going to go this way. That's easier that way. And you, you'll still see that we still do have power in it, just a little bit. Um, well, actually, I'm going to pull that off, just so you can see that it does have power, otherwise it'll turn off too fast. 
and I had already lost the juice. Let me do it again. Build up the juice a little bit. Actually, I'll do it this way. I'll just unplug it, and you'll see that it still runs for a second. You might want to be able to see when the power was killed, I guess. So we can see we have power indicated here and our fan is still spinning over here. So let's actually move the camera this way. Cover this up. Oh, I'll leave it. And you can see power's off and it still had uh, power to the fan. Now I'm going to show you. If you shut the switch off, it shuts off a lot faster. Still spins down because of free flow, but it doesn't. Have, the load is off because it turned it off. Still trying to output what it can, and we're back to where we are.